Hello everyone, we're back for more um, information about the uh, PMOS, the P-Channel MOSFET. So uh, here we're going to talk about the current versus voltage characteristics of the PMOS, which is going to be very similar to the uh, N-Channel device. So typical uh, P-Channel MOSFETs is drawn as shown um, with the source on top and the drain on the bottom because the normal uh, path of current flows from source to drain. And also the source is more positive than the drain in this uh, in typical modes of operation. So this is the way it's typically drawn. Um, the uh, the convention again is in schematics is to have the higher voltages on top of the page and lower voltages on the bottom of the page, and for the current to flow top to bottom on the page. So that's just a convention, and that's why it is uh, typically drawn <clears throat> this way. All right, so let's move on. Um, the um, the uh, voltages and currents on the um, MOSFET, uh, you know, there's different ways of drawing, uh, you know, marking these things. But typically, um, if we consider that the source voltage is higher than the gate voltage and source voltage is higher than the drain voltage, uh, we might want to mark the voltages as VSG, VSD, and also VDG. We can mark VGD as well. Um, the, the point is that the just like the N-channel MOSFET, the gate current is basically zero at DC, so ID and IS are one and the same. The only difference with this uh, device and this the, the direction of the current that we've chosen is um, that the drain current is coming out of the drain terminal, so it's not going to the drain terminal. So the current is flowing from source to drain, as shown. Um, however, uh, just like before, the gate source voltage does control the... Uh, the drain current, in this case, the gate to uh, it's the source to gate voltage VSG. Um, you could use VGS as well, but you have to, again, uh, as I said in the last lecture, you have to keep in mind that it's actually a negative voltage. So this way, um, maybe a little bit easier to handle because there are not so many negatives to keep track of. Um, so VSG uh, controls ID, and therefore, once again, MOSFET becomes a, a voltage controlled current source. Uh, we'll show this later. So uh, if we move through, you will see that, as I said, for normal operation, uh, VST is greater than zero. Source is greater than the drain, and the current flows top to bottom, as shown. And, of course, VSD, VSG, and VDG are related by KVL, right? So if you know two out of the three, you know the third one uh, from just uh, a KVL. Also, KCL just says that IS equals ID because IG is zero. So we know that as well. So if we know IS, you basically know ID. So just like before, there are actually uh, three regions of operation. There's something called cutoff, where the device is off, there's no channel formed, there's no current conduction, and the device behaves like an open circuit or an open switch. There's the triode or linear region, or something even called the ohmic region, in which uh, the MOSFET behaves as a nonlinear resistor, and under certain conditions, it can be approximated as actually a constant resistor. But nevertheless, there's an IV curve that's basically nonlinear. So in this uh, mode, uh, the MOSFET basically behaves as a closed switch, but it's not an ideal closed switch. It's got some finite on resistance, with the on resistance being that uh, the, the channel resistance, basically, the nonlinear resistance. And then finally, last but not least, we have the saturation region in which the MOSFET behaves as a current source <coughs> with the current uh, depending on VSG. So typically when we are uh, biasing a MOSFET for uh, uh, amplifier operation, we have to make sure that the MOSFET is, um, under all conditions, operating in the saturation region. Because if it leaves the saturation region, our calculations will be off. So saturation region is the mode or region to... Um, uh, to uh, to basically uh, use for bias uh, for for biasing for amplifiers, you need to have it in saturation. All right, um, so let's go through each one. This is a very parallel, um, you know, um, uh, discussion. Uh, parallel being parallel to the uh, n-channel MOSFET. So again, uh, you have the situation. We have VSG, VSD applied as usual, and notice that ID is being measured as coming out of the drain. So, if VSG is positive, uh, there will be some positive ions under the gate. But uh, if it's not uh, high enough, 
uh, there will be no channel present. There won't be any mobile uh, uh, charge carriers. So that means that if the VSG, the source to gate voltage, is less than a certain threshold, we have no current. And this is the cutoff region. Note that the VTH for PMOS is typically given as a negative number. So uh, we usually just take the magnitude of VTH uh, to look at the this this uh, this region. So just take that as a note, as a as a difference between the N channel and the P channel, or N MOS and the P MOS. So there are a lot of uh, similarities, but there are some differences. Probably more similarities than differences, actually. But uh, we need to keep track of them. So this is the cutoff region. All right. So uh, how about the other regions? Well, uh, if VSG is greater than this threshold voltage, greater or equal to, then the MOSFET can be in the triodely region or it could be in the saturation region. We don't know. We have to look at it or we have to assume and see if we match the, um, uh, you know, we, we, we can uh, meet the uh, inequalities that, re, uh, that uh, guarantee operation in those regions. So the um, uh, those regions, I guess, we can kind of... Um, Visualize them by the following two um, sketches. Uh, first, just take a look at the situation where we, we vary VSG, but we hold VSD constant. So when we do that, uh, the ID versus the VSG curve looks like a parabola, right? So VSG is less than v, uh, VTH magnitude, no current, and that's the cutoff region. But if you go above VTH, that part of the parabola that's curling up, that can correspond to either... Uh, uh, saturation or can correspond to triode but this is how the I versus ID versus VSG uh, characteristics look like now if instead we uh, take uh, the VSG as a constant you know say uh, a source to gate voltage is a constant um, and uh, we vary VSD okay and again here we're assuming that uh, uh, VSG is larger than the threshold voltage magnitude so that we're not in the cutoff region. Uh, and then we plot I versus VSD, ID versus VSD. You get this familiar curve. We've seen this in uh, N-channel as well. So you get this uh, uh, trial region, which is sort of upside down parabola. But once you get to a certain point, which is uh, VSG minus v, v, v threshold, which is the overdrive voltage, right? <clears throat> you get saturation. The current doesn't change anymore. And the, the current becomes independent of VSD. It just becomes one half mu PC aux, VSG minus magnitude of VTH, the entire thing squared. So this is a, a parallel uh, discussion of what we did in N-channel. Um, but uh, this is uh, what we expect. This is how the, um, uh, 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 this is what the analysis will give. This is what the characteristics look like. Uh, prob as I said, uh, more similarities and differences. So if we write the expressions, um, for triode, we have the expression uh, 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 as, as shown, and as you can see, the only thing that uh, we've really done is we change mu, mu n to mu p, because this is p channel, and then VSG, VSD uh, were VGS and VDS, they haven't changed, and then the VTH has put a magnitude on it. That's all that's changed. But the form looks exactly the same. Same thing can be said for the saturation region. Again, we just changed mu n to mu p, uh, VGS to VSG, and we're taking the magnitude of VTH, right? But the uh, inequalities, requirements are all very similar. So these two modes, of course, require that VSG is above the threshold, right? If you're not above the threshold, if you're below the threshold, you're cut off anyway. So you're not going to be uh, having any of these ID curves. ID will be zero. Right. So <clears throat> anyway, this is how the characteristic look like. So uh, if you go through and analyze or <clears throat> make some comparisons, <coughs> excuse me, make some comparisons, you'll see more similarities and differences. But as I said before, uh, the difference here is number one, ID is coming out of the drain. It doesn't not go into the drain. Number two, notice that the arrow terminal, the terminal, the arrow is the source. Even though it's sitting on top of the page, it's the source. That's number two. Uh, number three is voltages, okay, have uh, changed subscripts. So VGS, VSG, VDS, uh, VSD, etc. That's number three. And number four is VTH, we take the magnitude. 
because the VTH that's given to you for PMOS will be a negative value. So if you keep those things straight, um, you'll see that everything else is the same. The structure is identical. Okay, so let's move on. Um, so uh, as far as saturation region is concerned, here's ID. ID is given by that. It's a, as we said, it's a voltage control current source. VSG controls ID. Um, and in the trial region, of course, drain current looks like this. So this is directly from the expressions I just showed before. Um, and as before, uh, as we had done in the analysis before or the, the, the lecture before, um, if the uh, in, the, in, the, in the brackets, in the parentheses, if the first term, 2 VSG minus VTH magnitude, it's much, much greater than VSD, if that's true, then you can approximate the thing in the parentheses by 2 VSG minus v, uh, VTH magnitude. And when you do that, you'll have an expression which simply depends on um, uh, VSD, you know, directly related to VSD. So ID is something times VSD, and one can look at that as an IV curve of a resistor whose resistance is 1 over the quantity that's in front of VSD. Again, this is identical uh, analysis of what's going on. And basically, all we're just saying is that in the trial region, if, you're, um, you know, if your VSG is constant, the expression that's 1 over R on, under the brace, mu P C ox, W over L, VSG minus VTH magnitude, that term, if VSG is constant, that's basically a constant. So if VSD is not moving too much, then ID and VSD are directly proportional, right? So that means that on that upside down par parabolic curve, if you're not moving much on the horizontal axis for VSD, you won't be moving much on the vertical axis ID, and therefore you can approximate the operation by a constant slope, and the slope of that line is 1 over R on, the R resistance of the MOSFET. So um, that's about it. So this curve, again, we, uh, as shown, uh, we assume VSG is constant, right? So if you assume it's constant, that means that uh, uh, the, the values that are shown are uh, the, you know, the VSG minus VTH on the horizontal po uh, axis is a constant. So the curve is not moving around. So now, having said that, you can uh, determine that uh, for, small up, for small voltage operation, you will have basically a sort of an on resistance of this device. So that's why we say that in the in the uh, trial region, um, the device, the MOSFET, behaves like a nonlinear resistor, and under some circumstances, like this one, it can be approximated as a linear resistor. Okay, so that's the value of the resistor. It, it's just uh, one over the value that's been shown under the brace as one over Rn. So for small values of VST, MOSFET behaves like a resistor of value R on, and that's why trial region is also called linear, like linear like a resistor, or ohmic, you know, like a resistor. So uh, trial, linear, ohmic, these are interchangeable names. Okay, um, and that's all I have for uh, this and uh, the, the, the point about this lecture is that uh, we've seen the similarities and differences in the characteristics. Uh, next time, I'm going to do some examples. But for now, this is it. And uh, see you next time.